In this video, I'll explain to you how to obtain the formulas used in physics using calculus. If you're able to understand this, that means you don't have to memorize any of the formulas, which becomes really helpful in a topic like physics. So for this to work, we have to first consider acceleration as constant. So we know that the acceleration AX is going to be constant. We also know that from finding the derivative of velocity, we can find acceleration, which means that AX is going to be equal to dVx over dt. However, this doesn't really apply because in this case, we have acceleration, but not velocity. So we want to know how to find that velocity. And because acceleration is the derivative of velocity, that means that velocity is the integral of acceleration. So finding the integral of acceleration is going to give us our velocity vx. So the term would be vx is equal to, right now, all we have is that acceleration is a constant. So it's going to be a number like something like 10. So we can't really do much with that. But after finding the integral of that constant, we will come up with terms like ax is going to stay the same, it's a constant, so ax times a variable, in this case we're talking on time, so this is with respect to time, so that's going to be t, that's our variable, plus another constant. This symbol means a new constant. It's not the same constant acceleration was. So this is the equation we come up with. However, we can just leave this symbol like this. We have to give it something. So to do that, let's say that we want the velocity when the time is equal to zero. So our available time becomes zero. Then we will have that Vx when time is equal to zero, it's going to be zero plus this constant, meaning that this Vx is equal to that constant. And that is what we call V0x, which means is this is the initial velocity when the time is equal to zero. So putting all of that together, we'll find out that Vx is equal to Ax times time plus the initial velocity, v naught x. And that is going to be our first formula. The acceleration times the time plus the initial velocity is going to give you the velocity at, at that time. What I mean is at this time. We can even take this a step further and find displacement. So we know that velocity is equal to the derivative of displacement over time. So dx t over dt. Or in other words, displacement is the integral of velocity. We know that our velocity is vx is equal to, I'm going to displace this in here, v naught x first plus the ax times the time. We find the integral of that, and we'll have that the, displace, the, the displacement txt is going to be equal to v naught x times time. Again, time is the variable we add when we only have a constant. Plus, we have axt, so that becomes ax times time squared over 2. Plus, another constant. And again, this is not the same constant found in the previous case. It's a new constant generated. 
So using the same procedure as before, we want to give that constant a name. So we'll say that the time is equal to zero. X naught, X zero is going to be equal to, this becomes zero, zero plus zero plus that constant, which means that the X naught is equal to that constant. And this we call the initial displacement. So where the object is before there is any movement or any velocity change. So adding everything up, we'll come up with the second formula, which is x t is equal to x naught. Again, I'm changing the order plus the velocity v naught x. So that's the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. And this gives you the formula to find the displacement at a respective time t assigned, of course. Now there's a third formula of motion that is a little more difficult to find because we have to relate velocity and displacement. So I'll show that to you now. In the previous two formulas, we were able to use the integrals of acceleration and velocity to find the respective formulas. But in this case, we have to relate velocity and displacement. And there is not really an integral for that. So we will have to make one. So dv over dx is what we want. We want to convert this into something we actually understand. So we'll multiply that by one in a different way though. So this is going to be dv over dx, same thing, times the derivative of time on time. So the derivative of time with respect to time is equal to one. But we can change that and convert this into the following the derivative of velocity with respect to time times the derivative of time with respect to displacement. So that's just a, an interchange. And we actually understand these two things. This, the dv over dt is equal to acceleration and dt over dx is the inverse of velocity. So that will be 1 over v. Because velocity is dx over with respect to dt, but we have dt with respect to dx. So it's just the inverse, 1 over velocity. And now we know that dv over dx is going to be equal to a times u over v. We can also change this into velocity times dv is equal to acceleration times dx. And by integrating each side, we will find the last formula. So we want the integral of this part with respect to velocity and the integral of this part with respect to displacement. Because as you can see, this one is dv and this one is dx. And after obtaining the integral, you will get that half times the velocity squared minus the, veloc the initial velocity squared is equal to the acceleration times the final x, the final displacement, minus the initial displacement, x naught. And after arranging that, you can get that v final squared is going to be equal to v initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times the final displacement minus the initial displacement. And that is the third formula of motion. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it and found it useful.
And if you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this one.